How to build an evangelistic message. Now this is an exciting part for us because one of the things we love to do at On the Red Box is to preach open air. And I am a fan of all the great evangelists over the past years, of the last two, three hundred years, of how they would go out and preach the gospel in the open air. The field preachers of Wesley, the Whitfields, even Spurgeon started out his ministry preaching on the streets. And I have a library full of books talking about how they used to preach open air. And this is the where we've learned from. And for our study today is basically a a structure on how to build an evangelistic message, not one that's going to last an hour or two like they used to preach, but one that perhaps could last five, six, seven, or maybe eight minutes. Now, preaching on the street has such a power, such an effect, that you can't get any other way. You know, the scripture says that it was by the foolishness of preaching that God would save some people, and that's what we are dedicating ourselves, to be able to preach the gospel. Now, how do we go about doing that? That's what we're going to learn now. Every good evangelistic message is going to have a structure. You're going to have to build it. It's Call it the homiletics of open-air preaching. So we're going to have a foundation, and then we're going to build upon that. Now, there's all kinds of messages that are preached around the world, and in the church you could have messages on discipleship and follow-up and such, but we're focusing specifically on an evangelistic message. So if you want an evangelistic message, first and foremost, the foundation is going to be based on the cross. Now remember what uh, Paul said in Corinthians. He said that when he went to Corinth, he knew nothing among them except Christ and him crucified. And that's going to be our foundation. We want to know nothing among our people except Christ and him crucified. So we have to put the foundation of our message anchored in the cross. If you don't anchor your message in the cross, then you're not going to have an evangelistic message. So the cross is what we've been talking about, are the different doctrines of the atonement, the doctrines of the cross. Let's just do a quick review of what each doctrine is and what it means. Justification means to be declared innocent and righteous. Regeneration is being born again. Old things passed away, old new, and the new things come. Sanctification is being made holy. Redemption is rescuing out of darkness and, and brought into the God's kingdom of light. Reconciliation means we were once enemies and now we're brought together and now we're friends. Propitiation is a turning away of wrath and it was all directed towards Jesus so that we could be, uh, receive his love. And substitution is the trading of places where God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Now when we do an evangelistic message, we want that as our foundation. Pick one of those doctrines and develop it. And, and that is going to be the, the anchor of what this whole message is going to be about. If we don't preach Jesus, what are we preaching? So let's lift up Jesus, let's lift up the cross, and then he'll draw all men unto himself. Now, on top of the doctrine, next thing that you want to uh, choose is an object. How are we going to illustrate this doctrine? Creativity is one of the foundations of our ministry. And we want to use living parables. They're, they're gigantic uh, object lessons, so to speak. And so find an object that can best illustrate your doctrine. Let's, for this uh, lesson, just use justification as the doctrine that we're going to develop and as we uh, develop our uh, evangelistic message. Now justification, remember, means declared righteous and you're totally forgiven. And so what we're going to use is a judge's mallet. And perhaps we could use a robe of righteousness, perhaps a white robe that we're uh, totally uh, before God, we, we are reviewed as holy. And so a judge's mallet is something that a judge would do is he would declare us righteous and then he would dress us in the robe of the righteousness of Christ. So now I've got my doctrine, which is justification, and I'm going to illustrate it with a judge's mallet and a robe of righteousness. The next thing I want to do, build on top of that, would be we were going to aim at the heart when we preach. Remember, we're not aiming at the mind. We're going to aim at the heart, what's written on the heart. And if you remember, God has placed two things on the heart of every mankind, eternity and law. God has placed eternity, that desire to know what's going to happen after we die. And of course, the law are the Ten Commandments. So we're going to keep that in mind when we preach. We've got our doctrine, we've got our object, and we're going to be aiming at the heart towards eternity and towards the law. So basically when we're going to do an evangelistic message, it's going to be divided up into this. It's going to be the bad news, the cross, and the good news. 
And so let's start with the bad news. Now, there's lots of bad news out there when it comes to the condition of mankind. So let's take a look at the bad news. Basically, our structure of our message is bad news, cross, good news. Remember, we're preaching the cross. But for every good news, there's a corresponding bad news, and the cross is a solution to that. So if you look on the cards, you've got them numbered one through six. And we're just going to review a little bit of what the bad news is. Each doctrine has a number. Justification is one. Regeneration is two. And then let's just look up at the bad news card. The bad news is that we're guilty before God. When we stand before God, we're going to be judged as guilty. The bad news is that we're dead in trespasses and sins, and we've got no way to be able to become alive. The bad news, number three, is that we're sinful, and there's no power to live a holy life. The bad news, number four, is that we're slaves, and that there's, um, there's, there's like these chains upon us, and that there's no way we can become free. The bad news, number five, is that we're enemies of God, and there's no way that we can become friends. And the bad news is that we are children of wrath, and that when we stand before God, the dam of God's wrath will break upon us, and there's nothing that we can do about it. And so the bad news, you see the little circle in the middle of the card, is that one day we're going to stand before God, and we're going to be judged according to the things that we've done, good and bad. And on that day of judgment, when we stand before him as guilty, dead, sinful slaves, enemies, and children of wrath, the only consequence, of course, is going to be that we'll be cast into a place of outer darkness, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, a place called hell. See, now that's the bad news. Now, when you structure your evangelistic message, you're not going to talk about all the bad news. You're going to overwhelm them. You just pick one of them. You pick the one from the doctrine that you selected and the object that you selected when you began the structure of your message. So once you develop the bad news, talk about, in this case, we're talking about justification, how we stand guilty before God, how we've disobeyed His laws, and how when we stand before Him, we're going to be covered uh, with rags, and, and what are we going to do on that day? Then you talk about the cross. Now, right after the bad news, lift up Jesus. The cross goes right between the bad news and the good news. Now you have the wonderful opportunity to talk about Jesus, what he did, how he came down on this planet, how he ripped himself up in flesh and blood, how he walked among us, how he lived the perfect life that we couldn't live. Preach the cross, preach Jesus, how he got up on that cross, how he was made sin for us. And in, in justification, it's a wonderful thing, you know, because he declares us, he takes our sin, then he washes us away. So you talk about these things when you're developing your message. Talk about justification, how that because Jesus was crucified, died for our sin, rose from the dead, now, today, if you come to him, he is willing to declare you righteous and place upon you his robe of righteousness, and you can stand before God just as if you had never sinned. So then that's where you preach the cross. And then you want to talk about the good news. Now the good news, remember, after you preach the cross, the cross is all good news. It's what Jesus did for us to correct all these bad news. Let's take a look at the good news. Look at the numbers. Number one, in justification, the guilty are made innocent. You can stand before God as someone that is innocent, somebody that has never sinned before. That's how you are declared before God. That's good news. Look at the good news on number two. We were dead, but now we're made alive. That's called being born again. So the dead are raised to life. Look at number three. We were once sinful, and now we're holy. We've been set apart by God in sanctification, and now we're made holy. Number four, we were once slaves. But Jesus came in and ransomed us, paid the price, and he made us free. Number five, we were once enemies of God. But in reconciliation, the, the barrier of the sin, the wall of sin was broke down, and now we can become friends of God. This is wonderful news. Look at number six. We were once under the wrath of God, but because of what Jesus did on the cross, he took the wrath, and so now we can be loved before the Father, and we can be adopted into his family. So that's the good news. So if you're going to spend time talking about the bad news, we're guilty, we're going to be judged, we're going to end up going to hell, then spend about the same amount of time lifting up Jesus and about what he did and how he lived and how he is the one that can, it's the only one that can take care of our problem. And then lastly, if you're going to talk about the bad news, talk about the good news and make sure you give as much time to the good news as you do the bad news so your message is balanced. And then finally, once you've preached Christ and Him crucified, they know the bad news, they know what the good news is, now you have to talk to them 
about the call. You're going to call them to repentance. You're going to call them to faith in Christ. And you're going to do it with urgency. You're going to tell them how they need to talk to God. In many places here, at least in Europe, they don't really even know how to talk to God. If they know how to talk to God at all, it's some memorized prayer they learned in their religion. But they don't really know what a heartfelt prayer is. And so uh, repentance and faith in Christ is, is what the Scripture tells us we need to do to be able to be right with God. Repentance, turn from your sin, turn to Christ. Repentance, it's a 180 degree turn. You leave your sins behind and you follow after Christ. Faith in Christ, faith in Christ is when you believe in your heart that what Jesus did for you is for you and you deposit your faith in Him. You leave all behind and you follow Christ. Then the Spirit of God comes down and He makes all that that was bad, He makes it good thanks to what Jesus did on the cross. The structure of a cross, Let's review real quick. Our foundation, the doctrines of the cross. Number two, on top of that, pick an object so that you can illustrate. Tell a story. Illustrate it with some object like we do on the street with a judge's mallet and a robe of righteousness. Bring that out onto the street so that people can identify what the doctrine is all about. Number three, aim at the heart, eternity and law. Number four, you've got yourself some bad news that you got to communicate so that people will desire to run to the good news. Then, in, then you preach Christ right in the middle. Talk about what he did and how he can turn your bad news into good news. Talk about the good news, then call people to faith and repentance of Christ. Now, all of that you can actually do in two minutes. You can preach an evangelistic message in two minutes. You can preach it in eight minutes. You can preach it in ten. On the streets, we try to do it between five and eight minutes, and it's very effective. I use that same structure when I'm preaching in the churches, but instead of just doing eight minutes, I'll probably preach 45 minutes. And so this structure has a lot of flexibility, but try to get all these ingredients in there for effective evangelistic message.